We have a video from the Russian Energy Week 2021 with CNBC's Hadley Gamble. And this interview lasted over two hours. And in this segment, Russian President Vladimir Putin weighs in on China and Taiwan. Let's uh, hear what Putin has to say. If China were to invade Taiwan, would you say a real risk of war? Well, if you've been following what the leaders of the People's Republic of China have been saying, you might have noticed that in one of the latest speeches where I have personally been present, that was an international event in the framework of the UN where I've been present, and I remember that President Xi was saying that the People's Republic of China has no plans to use military power to resolve any type of problems or conflicts. That was more or less his statement. That's the first thing I wanted to say. Boom. Boom. Right away, Putin says, at any meetings where I was uh, present, the one that I was present, Chinese uh, President Xi said that they have no plans for military action against Taiwan. Point number one. Putin shuts down her question right away. Secondly, as far as I understand, the Chinese philosophy regarding the philosophy of statehood and state management, it does not include use of force. And thirdly, I think... Point number two. The Chinese philosophy, statehood, sovereignty, no force is needed. Play the long game. Play the long game. And eventually, things will work out. Does not need to use force. China is a huge, powerful economy. And in terms of purchasing parity, China is the economy number one in the world ahead of the United States now. And by increasing this economic potential, China is capable of implementing its national objectives. And here I do not see any threats. As for the South China Sea, yes, indeed. So, three points right away. Putin shuts down the, the claim that China is going to, to strike out at Taiwan. Right away he shuts it down. Now he's going to shift over to South China Sea. I mean, watching Putin speak is just, it's, it's a master class, a master class in, uh, in diplomacy and clarity as well. There are somewhat conflicting and contradictory interests, but the position of Russia is based on the fact that we need to provide an opportunity for all countries of the region without interference from the non-regional powers to have a proper conversation based on the fundamental norms of international law. It should be a process of negotiations. That's how we should resolve any arguments. And I believe there is a potential for that, but it's not fully used so far. Notice how Putin says the way Russia sees it, or in Russia's opinion. He's never lecturing. He's never saying that this country should do this and that because we tell them to do that. He's saying from Russia's viewpoint, from Russia's standpoint, what's beneficiary to Russia, beneficial to Russia, is this. And of course, talks about negotiation and diplomacy and international law. He's never lecturing. He's never lecturing the other sides or the other parties involved, in this case, the South China Sea. In terms of that response, obviously three and a half trillion dollars of global trade flows through the South China Sea every year and almost as much as uh, in terms of oil as the Strait of Ormuz itself. So it's considered an international waterway. When you talk about external powers, those that are not regional, are you referring to the United States? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm primarily talking about those countries that are not part of this region. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm talking about those countries that are not part of the region. Don't get involved. When you think about this a bit more broadly, President Xi has, of course, um, 
taken drastic measures to um, address this energy crisis. He's essentially said they should buy gas at any price. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, conversations being had about whether or not China was going to be able to stick to their goals in terms of the climate change agenda in the face of this rising crisis. How damaging do you think it will be uh, to the green energy agenda if China is forced via this crisis um, to move away from their goals? The green energy agenda. They are they're such ideologues. CNBC, Hadley Gamble. They're just stuck in ideology. There's an energy crisis and they're thinking about the Green New Deal. Well, you're asking me questions that I can't answer. I'm not President Xi. I'm the President of the Russian Federation. And I can't... Thank you. Thank you. I'm not President Xi. I don't know how... I don't know if China's going to stray away from their CO2 targets or whatever the hell they, they have to do for, for the green energy stuff. I don't know. I don't care. It's not me. Maybe you should ask President Xi. What are the plans of the Chinese management, but I only know what they do. And that also includes cooperation with Russia. First of all, China is the largest trade partner for Russia, and despite the decline in the global economy, the trade turnover between Russia and China is increasing, and in nine months of the current year, it has exceeded $100 billion, and that is a very good indicator for us. We can even set a record for this year. And in this regard, China is a highly reliable partner for us. And I'm not talking about political components of that. I'm talking about China being a strategic partner of ours in almost all areas. And China is truly a reliable partner and an ally. And China is delivering on all undertaken commitments. And if there are any questions, be that in the economic area or in any other area, we always sit at the same negotiating table and we search for solutions. And we do find the solutions by making compromises. The same applies to, co to cooperation in the energy area. China works with us to develop one of the largest projects on the LNG, by the way, together with uh, Total Energies, with Novatec. And that is a successful project. That is Arctic LNG. The second project that China will also most probably participate in. Together, we have agreed on supplies of gas, of pipeline gas to China. We have China, Russia. He's just running through all the deals they have. While, while she's sitting there worried about the Green New Deal and green energy, Putin's just like rattling off all the deals that Russia and China have inked and that they're going through and all the stuff that they're building to connect the countries even more. That's basically his, his answer to her, is I have no idea what China's going to do with, the green, with their green energy stuff. I'm not Xi. Maybe you should ask Xi. But let me tell you how business is done. Russia, China, China, Russia, they're, they're just moving forward. And everything he says about China is complimentary. You know, he's, he's full in. You're not going to separate Russia from China or China from Russia at this point in time. I mean, they are like connected right now. And the energy, all the energy deals they're, they're building together, what do you think that's going to do in the next 5, 10, 20, 50 years out? It's going to connect them even more. Pipelines and energy deals and all these things, and they bind countries together long term. I mean, it's, he is just laying it out for her. You, you continue to, to worry about your, your Green New Deal and your Paris Accords and all that stuff. And yeah, you know, we'll, we'll look at that stuff. We'll look at it in a practical way, in a sovereigntist way. But we're also out making deals and we're making deals with China. Man, Putin's just crushing it the pipeline route and the total volume that we're aiming to achieve is 38 billion cubic meters. China is a huge market and a rapidly developing and growing economy with a very large amount of consumers. And I believe today we have generally agreed on the second route going through the territory of Mongolia. But I've been saying that before. 
If we relate to the supplies of coal, China has large coal generation and the leadership of China is taking large effort to eliminate and go away from coal generation. 1.5 billion people live in China. It's not that simple to do. It's not a trivial task. They need to protect the interests and the needs of their population, and that's exactly what they are doing. Need to protect the interests and the needs of their population, and that's exactly what they're doing with regards to coal. So they'll deal with coal, but what comes first? The needs of their population. They have a very careful plan, very balanced plan, to decrease the carbon footprint. And the same applies to the transition period when more of blue fuel will be consumed, more of gas. And it is in our plan to increase the gas supplies through the available infrastructure and also in terms of the ones that will only come up in the future. I do not know whether China will be able to deliver on all the plans that it is setting itself because the volumes are huge, but everything that has been done by China in terms of achieving the goals that they set, it was all delivered properly. Really, literally everything, be that economics, they've achieved everything and that gives us hope that also in terms of decreasing the anthropogenic load and the carbon footprint, they will achieve the goals that they set themselves up to 2060, as far as I remember. Basically, China is a good business partner for Russia. Bottom line. Bottom line. All right. That is, that is the video. I will put a link to the full video if you guys want to see the full video without any interruptions. And uh, the Duran shop, 10% off. Use the code realnews at duran.locals.com. Bitchute Rumble, Odyssey, and Super U. Once again, I will put the full video uninterrupted down below CNBC with Hadley Gamble and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Take care.